Hey there, Storm fans, Brian T. Cook, and today we're playing the Epic Storm, but not the list in front of you. In front of you is what I've been playing the last couple weeks. I played it in the Legacy Showcase Finals. Unfortunately, I came in ninth place. Womp, womp. And afterwards, I was talking to some of the Storm supporters of this channel in our Discord. That link is in the description below. There's a member section, so if you're a member of this channel, you can connect your Discord account to YouTube, and then you can access the member section. So in there, I was talking about how I wasn't in love with Massacre, and the fourth Abrupt Decay seemed like a lot. So I was talking with some of these people about what to possibly do next. And I started thinking about the bad matchups and how I can't be 8-cast, like, pretty much ever. And I came up with an, an sort of an older idea list, which is you board in Empty the Warrens. It's something we did for a very long time with this deck during the height of Grixis Delver in 2016 to 2018. And 4 Empty was pretty popular back then. And against a deck like 8 Cast, they're boarding up to 8 forces. So the idea is that you have a bunch of Storm Spells between Galvanic Relay and Empty the Warns and you overwhelm them that way. Okay, this seems reasonable. Uh, I mean, there's something wrong with this list. But I started talking to Alex McKinley one-on-one -on -one about it. And we started to push the idea a little bit further. And we came up with this list here. And you'll notice there's no Brainstorm in it. That's right, no brainstorm. So if you look at the difference between this list and this list, we cut blue. And the idea is that we're playing blue right now just for brainstorm. Yes, Echo is a blue card as well, but we're really playing, you know, Underground Sea primarily for this card. And is brainstorm so good that it's worth it? That's a pretty contentious debate. I don't have a strong opinion one way or another. I've played a bunch without brainstorm at this point, and I think that TES could look to cut blue. Mishra's Bobble filled a void of Ponder while supporting Galvanic Relay in a way that we never thought was possible. So here we have a non-blue mana base where, you know, Blood St. Meyer gets everything, Marsh Flats gets everything other than Taiga, and not getting Taiga is kind of a big deal. Uh, and then Verdant Catacombs gets everything other than Plateau. So this is interesting. So the idea is that Ave is a lot like Ad Nauseum, in the fair matchups like where it's going to win people don't play answers to this card the difference is that it's really bad in the combo mirrors and by not playing ad nauseum you get to run a bunch of really expensive cards in your deck like tendrils of agony or the main deck ave or even multiple copies of echo of aeons and echo is really good because it allows you to mulligan hyper aggressively and in fast matchups that's what's key so being able to board or mulligan really aggressively in fast matchups just gives you a really big leg up and Echo just allows you to do that. So we're interested in multiple Echo of Aeons because Echo is good versus non-blue. All the Storm spells, so Galvanic Relay, Tendrils, Ave, those are all really good versus the blue deck. So you have sort of blue non-blue down. And your only weakness, in my opinion, is combo. And yes, Ave isn't good against combo, but Echo is. So I think it's a little bit of a trade-off. Yes, you could fizzle off your Echoes, but not having it, I don't know. Like, I think it's fine. Like, I'm not going to build my deck to win the combo mirrors. I think that's kind of the wrong approach we have here. So with this list, you do get five main deck protection spells, three veil, two orms champ. But we started talking, and is it worth running white just for four cards? Because we have two ending in the board and two abrupt decay. And I think you do want the multiple empty plans still. Because one of the features of this list is getting to run a ton of expensive storm spells and not having to worry about ad nauseum. Because ad nauseum is a limitation on the deck. So, also, you still appear into the best. You can draw cards. I even tossed out the idea of a main deck peer to Alex, and Alex didn't love it. But I think you could try main deck peer into the best. Just throwing that out there. Um, and we came to the list that we will be playing today, which is the one in front of you. So there's no white. You get to run a basic swamp again. You get eight fetches that get every land in your deck. All right. So we're up to 13 lands, though. Just a warning. Without Brainstorm, we felt like maybe we wanted that extra land for consistency purposes. And here, everything is pretty much the same, uh, other than the fact that we went down to four Veil of Summer instead of five protection spells, and we gained a land. So... 13 lands, 4 protection, the main deck is the same, and instead of running the Prismatic Ending in the board, you gain the 3rd Abrupt Decay and Pulverize. That's what we arrived at. This is what I will be playing today. 
This is not an official deck version. This is just something that I've been thinking a lot about. And basically, for the last month or so, I've been really <laughs> battling myself with an internal conflict on if blue is good enough to play at the moment. Like, it's just for Brainstorm. Is that worthwhile? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But I'm really interested in, could this be the future of the Epic Storm? Having Echo of Aeons, Ave, Tendrils, Relay, multiple empties, this sort of thing. I don't know, but I'm going to try it here today. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I really do appreciate you watching. Let's see how this goes. Should be pretty fun. I'll see you in the first match. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsfirm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsfirm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We're on the play. This hand uh, doesn't really get to play magic, so we're not going to keep this one, unfortunately. Mulligan. But we are a deck with triple echo, and here we are. We have it. So we'll keep this. And bottom, probably the dark ritual. Keep. Ritual goes in the bottom. Vernon Catacombs. Mishra's Bobble. Let's see what their top card is. Days. Okay. Am I supposed to go all in on an Echo right here? I suppose I could try to get them to force a Burning Wish. Grab the Taiga. Lines a Diamond. They forced our Diamond. Ah, all right. Guess I shouldn't have fetched. We draw a Petal. We know that they have Days in hand. There's a Channeler. Draw for turn. Throw Mox. I think we just have to pass, unfortunately. They brainstorm into Mishra's Bobble, which can surveil away a card they didn't want, which would be this Lightning Bolt. They have four in hand, one of which is a Daze. Wasteland is brutal. Ouch. They swing one. Come on, Diamond off the top rope. Draw. All right, so we found a replacement land for the one that was destroyed. But should not never have been destroyed because I shouldn't have fetched. That was on me. I just never thought that they would force a Alliance on Diamond, but that's my own fault. Poor play gets punished. Brainstorm. They kept a card on top with Surveil. Okay, they cast a Ponder, another Surveil trigger. Their channeler is now Delirious. Swing. We follow the 15 life. They have four in hand, one of which is days. Draw. Can't use that yet, but that wasn't a bad one. We only have one more green source in the deck, by the way, so another fetch doesn't help us here. Uh, this was this fetch really bit me in the butt. Is this a Merktide? They wisely decide to attack first, get in that little bit of extra damage. And there's the Merktide Regent. Okay, can I draw something good here? No is the answer. Pass. They attack for eight, we'll go to four. We are dead to a lightning bolt if I decide to use my land. Draw. And I think we're just gonna call it. All right, game two. That did not go well. Let's bring in the empty. So we want three empty. One thing that I talked to Alex about was boarding out Echo in these matchups because you don't really want to refill the deck that has Force Negation and Force of Will in their hand. And you kind of just want to like, this is what used to be called like Grinding Station uh, Storm, which didn't play the card Grinding Station, by the way. Uh, but this is sort of the uh, thought process we're choosing to adapt here. You could board in Abrupt Decay, but in order to do so, you have to bring out your zeros and you need those for your deck to function. So I don't think that's actually the plan we want to be on. Game number two on the play. Uh, why couldn't this Tendrils be one of our three empties? Mulligan. This hand is so close, but neither of these are the payoffs we need. I think we have to go to five. Ay ay ay. Okay, so... Bottom both of these, and we have to pray our opponent for some reason kept a hand that doesn't have a force in it. Lines a diamond. 
And they just forcible lines at Diamond. Pass. Volcanic Island into Delver. Not in a good spot. Another Chromox we have to pass. Force and negation the reveal. Yeah, we uh, are not going to win this one, unfortunately. It was not in the cards. I mean, that was a good draw, but we know that they have a four, so I need to wait until we have more resources. They play a polluted delta. Ouch. Empty. Okay. Getting a little closer. They bolt me. I go to 11. They have five in hand, one of which is a force of negation. This puts me to eight. They left and bolt. Hmm. I mean, I could try to race them with empty here, but I lose to a Merktide region. Chromox. Their results will imprint the Burning Wish. Let's play the Lion's Eye Diamond. Maybe they'll force it again. Force Pitch Brainstorm. Okay, Chromox. We have to imprint the Veil. Play a Mox Opal. Tap it for blue, so that way it seems innocent. If you tap it for black, they might think that you have tendrils, and I don't want that to happen. And that resolves. All right, empty the Warrens for 14. On a mulligan to five. Through double force, can we win? All right, so they have fluster too. Wow. All right, we were never winning this one. You got me, opponent. You're too good. All right, zero and one. I don't know how indicative this match was of the strength of the deck. I feel uh, this wasn't a great showing, but we'll see how the remaining four matches go. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, let's bounce back. Match number two, we're on the draw and I will keep. So after losing round one, thinking in between the games, I had uh, twice there where I opened up a tendrils in my mulligans and uh, how much I hate that card. Soul Guide Lantern, sure. Either Painter or 8-Cast. Vernon Catacombs, let's play a Bobble. Target them. It is, in fact, 8-Cast. Okay. Target ourselves. Definitely want to draw that. Lion's Eye Diamond is a good one. This is a matchup that I wanted to face today, too. Like, I'm not, like, excited to face 8-Cast, don't get me wrong. But... Part of the reason we changed the list was to make this matchup better. And holy moly, the, that was two draws. For sure. Okay. Mox Opal makes me a little nervous here. We know that they have an Emery. They're going to make a Construct. Okay. And then they can play the Emery. Sure. They milled their Shadow Spear. Let's fetch. I don't know. We'll grab the Swamp. I, I, I can. It doesn't matter. Play a Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. The Lion's Eye Diamond. Wishclaw Talisman. They did not want to fight. Okay, so I'm, I'm in a weird spot here. I can A for 5, which does represent lethal. But they have a Shadow Spear in the graveyard. So what they can do is they can... Um, they can replay the Shadow Spear and put it on one of their constructs that's then a 5-5. Five, five. So I'm not sure if that's actually something we want to do. I think I'm kind of forced here to spin the wheel on Echo. We're one mana short of uh, this being Veil and Naive, which would probably be good enough. They force. Okay. Well, Veil. So this way we draw two. A land? We didn't need a land. If I draw something here that makes mana, I can put a lethal tendrils on the stack. Draw. Ugh. So I could have cracked the LED. I'm aware of that. But if I crack the LED, I don't leave myself the ability of being able to echo after, which is an issue. So we'll activate. I'm forced to go grab an echo. I guess I could have grabbed relay. Maybe relay would have been better. Okay, spin the wheel. Oh, I just get to do it all. Cool. All right. Mox Opal. 
Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Cloudochrome Mox. Might as well get the extra Storm. No. And Galvanic Relay. Storm 14. Pass the turn. They've sucked in an Aether Spell Bomb with their Urza Saga. They chose not to make another construct. They play another copy of Urza's Saga. Lotus Petal. I'll move my sideboard down. Thought Monitor, sure thing. Mishra's Bobble. Chalice of the Void on one. They're swinging for 10, which will put me to eight. So now we have to win through a Chalice of the Void and them possibly having a force. They bounce their own Thought Monitor. Weird. Okay. Maybe they want it for a blue card or they... I don't know. It's probably the fact they wanted it for an extra blue card. They're going to choose the... Oh, please give me back the Wishclaw. Pretty please. Please do that. And they're going to, making my job easy for me. They play another copy of Mox Opal. Okay, time to party. Draw for turn. Right of Flame. Let's start off with a Chrome Mox. And print this Veil of Summer. Tap Opal for green. We'll play another opal. The idea here is to just threaten Eve if they try to interact. Play by you. Mishra's Bobble. Mishra's Bobble. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. That is spell number six. Attempt a Wishclaw Talisman. That resolved. Okay. Tap the Taiga and a Chrome Mox. We will hold priority. A Burning Wish on the stack. Sacrifice the diamond for triple block. They force pitching Emery. That's fine. Activate Wishclaw. Grab diamond. Play a diamond. So if for some reason they had a main deck fluster, we could beat that with the Ave. But I think my gut's telling me that I should just get the main deck tendrils. All right. So we'll sack the diamond for triple green. Activate the Wishclaw. Grab tendrils of agony and cast it. Okay, we have taken game number one from eight cast. Once again, the plan is to just multiple empty them and get rid of these Echoes. Echo is just not a card you want versus those blue decks. We also want Abrupt Decay in this matchup, although I've mentioned to Alex, like, we're bringing in Abrupt Decay for their Chalice of the Void on one when we only have 12 one-drops in our deck at this point. So it's a little bit weird, uh, especially when you're just really trying to relay them over and over. I think you can afford to board out one Opal and two Mishra's Bobble. Try this out. Game number two, we're on the draw. I don't know. Like, this is a hand that, yeah, you can, like, turn one sideboard relay or empty if you get a good draw. But, like, they're an eight four stack post board. We have the ability to outgrind them. I think we should just mulligan. Like, this is a very good hand in the matchup. Keep will get rid of one copy of Burning Wish. They play a copy of Mox Opal, Lotus Petal. Chalice of the Void on zero. Okay. In my experience, this often hurts the cast player more than it hurts me. Land pass. And now they're passing the turn. Surprise, surprise. Galvanic Relay. We'll fetch. Usually want to grab two mountains just because we have this Pulverize that we have access to. Grab Taiga. And Badlands. Let's just play an innocent little Wishclaw Talisman. Force Negation Pitching Thought Monitor. Well, yeah, it's pretty tough to play Thought Monitor when you've stopped your own ability to play zeros. Okay, they have three cards in hand. Veil of Summer. So this one's actually pretty interesting because it beats the Chalice of the zero, Chalice Zero in play and we can play our artifacts through it. Let's attempt the Veil. It resolves, so now we can play the Lines of Diamond. This Chalice doesn't do anything. Pro Mox, imprint the Decay, and we will Burning Wish. I, I'm actually going to grab the Echo here. I don't think a Relay for five is worthwhile. We have a Land Drop as well. Let's party. Protected Echo. Unfortunately, this doesn't um, do anything this turn, but we're very close to Aeve Progenitor Ooze. They play C the Synod. Chalice of the Void on one. Okay. 
We still have Eve next turn for three, but is three good enough? I might want to wait on that. Let's fetch to Thin. Grab a Bayou. Draw. All right, well, I think that four is a good enough number. Grab the Badlands. A Lotus Petal. And this is what I was talking about on the deck tech, where they have chalices and they have forces, but both of these things don't beat storm spells. So let's just storm spell them out. Like, yeah, I lost the match to Delver, but I kind of think that match was a little bit of a fluke. All right, it's slime time. And uh, I'm sure you saw after match number one, but our Epic Storm mini token pack has slime time tokens built in with the power and toughness. Nice chalice force. Yep, you can thought cast. Another seat and a thought monitor. Okay. The chump blocker. We still have three relays in our deck too, so I have these spells in my hand that I can just throw into chalice of the void to relay. Or not to relay, but to empty. But relay would also be acceptable. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Throw mox. Let's swing. I imagine that they're going to block the 2-2 and we'll trade those, but we'll see what they decide to do here. They do what I guessed, and then they'll take 9. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know why I said 9. Uh, 12. I forgot about the 3-3. Three, three. There's a Saga. I was actually expecting them to play this last turn over the seat because that could have done some damage. Sigh. Okay, so this gives them a lot of chump blockers. Sai is the card they needed to stabilize here. And then the Urza Saga can make Constructs moving forward and then get Shadow Spear. Could actually end up being pretty bad for me. A lot of zeros. Okay. They have three cards in hand. Another Lotus Petal. Holy moly. Two cards left. Draw for turn. Wish Claw Talisman. Let's play the Claw. That resolves. Okay. Swing. They're going to kill my 3 3 and then chump these two. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Um, I didn't rearrange the blocking. I literally did this in a video the other day too. Ah, uh, man, I know better than this. I get so excited that I click through instead of rearranging. Yep, that's just bad on me. They shouldn't have these two tokens. I messed up. Ancient Tomb. Emery. They bounced the original. Weird. Okay, so I could replay the Ave here. They have a very large construct. Draw, relay. Just trying to think out loud what my options are. So in theory, I could activate the Wish Claw using the Chrome Mox, go get Burning Wish, cast Burning Wish with two lands open, pulverize away their entire board, and then relay. Or do I attack, make them activate the Saga, which it puts them to six. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to pulverize here. Okay, grab the burning wish. Cast the wish. Yes. Grab pulverize. And now we cast the pulverize. We can go to combat and we'll see what they do. So they're going to make a one one and block. They go to six life. Okay, so post combat, we will write a flame, storm three. Chrome Mox Storm Four will imprint the Veil of Summer because they're likely to replay the Chalice of the Void on one. And this gives me extra green for the Eve on the following turn. Relay for five. Okay, so they're going to four life. Looks like I hit Relay Land Petal Veil of Summer Land. They play Chalice of the Void for zero off the emery and that makes a construct or a thopter which turns their construct into a four four okay what a draw okay so i actually can't ave again i can play land i can veil of summer lotus petal and i believe i have the basic left in the deck as a fetchable I think I'm going to play out the diamond for the relay rather than holding it for an extra ooze. All right, let's force them to make a decision here. Swing with a 4-4. Four, four. They want to trade. Okay. And now we relay for four. And the cards are Tendrils of Agony, 
Chrome Mox. Right of Flame. Wishclaw Talisman. Those look like pretty good cards to me. Opponents at four life. They activate the Emery on Thought Monitor. Okay. They're now paying cost. Tapping the Ancient Tomb down to two life? Oh no, they're drawing a card. Off the Psy. Okay. I mean, you can attack for two. But you are dead to a single copy of Tendrils here. No, do not play only one copy of Tendrils. Uh, they are a four stack, and they have two cards in hand. Possibly three. And it's going to be three with the activation of the Bobble. So there's no reason to do, like try to be funny when you can just make sure that you win instead. We'll draw. Empty. Right of Flame. This makes three red. Chrome Mox. And print the Ave. Okay, they've seen enough. We beat eight cast. We set out to do what we wanted to do this league. Let's just try to win the next few and uh, make up for that first match. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Round number 3! We are on the draw in swag. We will keep... Blooded Strand, okay. Bobble, we'll play that out. Target ourselves. Not really interested in another land here. Just in case they're a wasteland deck, I'm going to go fetch the basic. Good draw. Looted Delta Pass. Take a draw. Eve. So I could try to jam here. We're a mana short of Pure into the Abyss, so I think I'm actually going to just pass. Basic Island. Brainstorm. All right, their brainstorm has resolved. And they grab another basic island. For your Dane. Are we facing like high tide here? What's going on? All right, so it's sneak and show. They have five cards. I think it's time for us to move. Draw. Another land. Thyga. Veil of Summer. I just want that summertime magic. Let it resolve. Please. Force of Will pitching Brainstorm. They have three in hand. I think I'm going to pass. They could have, like, if they had it last turn, they could have went for it. Intuition. And I'm going to get punished for passing. Well, I guess this could have just gotten another Force, too. Okay. You've got it. Two cards in hand. No Amis? Ah, uh, bummer. So even if I went for it last turn, they had two different ways to stop me. All right, so we lost that one. I should have went for it on turn two, I think. Knowing what they're on. I, I didn't know what they were playing, but in hindsight, if I had known. Ward out the Ave. And I don't think we want relays. We're going to keep one in, just because I don't think there's a better card on our sideboard, but we'll submit this. Game two, we're on the play. Uh, we could hardcast Echo on turn one. Let's try it. Going with the mulligan. In my experience, a lot of these Omnitail decks aren't Force of Negation decks. So, you know, 60% chance this Echo resolves or whatever. Really wish that I had a land, but instead of this Burning Wish, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal. Am I allowed to have a Dark Ritual? I am. Okay, let's attempt to Echo of Aeons the hard way. Spin the wheel. And it resolves! But unfortunately, our new 7 is unplayable. Holy moly, is that bad. Yikes. That's, like, really bad. I think Chrome Mox is our best... I don't even know what our best... Diamond? And for some reason they don't counter it? I mean, Chrome Mox is fine here. Um, well, Chrome Mox imprint... A burning Wish? Pass. Okay, not a good sign for me. We have to pass. Intuition, yep, and now we're dead. The only chance we have here is if they're plays to like show and tell and put in like Emrakul. Because then we could sneak in a Wishclaw and maybe have a chance. But they're, on, they're Omnitel, so they play four Omniscience. It's just very different. This is not sneak and show. 
And you're not killing me here? Weird. Right of flame. Right of flame. Mox Opal. Galvanic Relay. 4-4. Four, four. Two petals, a right of flame, and a veil. That's actually pretty good. But I can't imagine, like, that we either get to untap or that these things resolve. Like, it just doesn't make sense. We know that they have show and tell on hand. Intuition again, this time getting the omniscience. Yep. So now they have both halves. Okay. We're just dead. And that's the game. That echo was one of the worst echoes I've ever had. It was... Wow. Yep, we are one and two. I don't think Brainstorm would have fixed that personally, but oh well. One and two, let's try to get the next few. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match four. Not looking so hot right now, but... We're going to try to keep our chin up and just play tight and win. I do think that, uh, I mean, I don't like to make excuses, but sometimes in Magic there is variance. I think that's something most people would agree with. And when we look at this league, I think both of our losses, there's uh, some poor variance for us. I'll say that. There's a Saga. Okay. Lotus Petal. Is this 8-cast again? Sure. It is, in fact, 8-cast again. Okay, well, if anything, we'll learn this league if this list actually does beat a cast. I think that's a silver lining. And another activation of Bobbles. So they're going to draw three cards in their upkeep, drawing up to five. Chal Zero is pretty backbreaking for us. That hurt a lot. Okay. We do have four copies of Veil of Summer in our deck. Is Hits. Soul Guy Lantern, have at it. Sure. Take a draw. There we go. They have three. I think I'm supposed to take the opportunity to play the Veil here. I know that it's not permanent, but being able to get these bobbles into play to cycle them is going to be pretty important. Also, I I don't think eight cast players are supposed to chal zero me. Because they like it really does hurt them more than it does me. Okay, so we've played a bunch of zeros into their chalice. Bobble them. Okay, so they're drawing Ancient Tomb, which is good for them. We draw another Veil. I like that. We need to respond to this just in case they're on a list that has main deck Needle. Emery. They're about to shuffle their deck anyway, so that Emery is not going to be there. We'll target ourselves. Okay. Shadow Spear. They draw a card with the Soul Guide. They play Ancient Tomb. I'll draw two cards off these bobbles. We know one of them is Galvanic Relay. And then we get a random plus her draw step. That was a good uh, sequence of cards. Veil of Summer again. They have four cards in hand. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Now we have a tough decision on do I keep this pedal around or do I relay now for five? And I think I just want to... Like, I'm in the driver's seat here, so I think what we want to do is make sure that even if this echo fizzles, I have something going on next turn. So I'm going to relay for five. Wishclaw, Wishclaw, Bayou, Chrome Mox, and Diamond. Okay. Practice for blue. Spin the wheel. Storm is six. Okay, so we can relay again. Bobble. And we'll fetch... Grab a Badlands. We'll tap the Opal, I guess. Relay. Whole bunch of cards going into Exile. Upkeep will look at their top card. There's a Saga. Chalice on one. Yep. That's tough. Dark Ritual. So we do have a Pulverize we have access to. But the problem with that is that if they have a Force, we're probably out of this game. Hmm. Play the Bayou. Alternatively, I could try to just relay again and then try to hit Tendrils because we have a Tendrils on our main deck. So if I tap two lands and play Wishclaw, a bunch of zeros, I could try to Tendrils next turn. All right, I think I might like that a little bit more. Let's try a Wishclaw. That resolved. 
Chromox. Chromox. Lines of Diamond. It's worth noting that uh, this Verdant Catacombs has no land to fetch. Because the Swamp is already in exile. Storm is 6. We'll play the Bobble. Storm 7. I'm one mana short of being able to Tendrils this turn. And I think I don't want to sacrifice the Lotus Petal. So I think I'm just going to Relay now. Relay for 8. We could also theoretically just Ave next turn instead of Tendrils if I don't get enough Storm. But I don't know how I'd hit the mana. Okay. They thought cast. And they're just passing. Another zero is good. But I think I'm short of tendrils. Okay, so we're just playing stuff at this point. Tap the opal for green. We'll activate Wishclaw. Grab the Ave. And there's no fetchable in the deck. Play slime time. Unfortunately, it's only for six. So the plan at this point is that we rebuild and they're going to equip their giant construct with Shadow Spear. That's going to happen. So the plan is that we rebuild and we try to draw into Tendrils and we pretty much win that way. They're at 16. They're going to make another construct and then probably search up Mox Opal. And they do. Another saga. Jeez. All right. I think I lost this one. Brutal. They're attacking. So they'll go to 24. So I throw these two in front. This doesn't give death touch. So they lose their construct. Okay. So I lose one construct here. Or one ooze here. Draw. I swing out. They block. They block. They take. Yeah, yeah. all right, this is a losing battle. We should go to the next game. Unfortunate. All right, let's bring in the empty plan. Abrupt decays. Getting rid of the echoes. Two bobble and an opal. Submit. Game two on the play. I don't know. Sure. I mean, I don't love this hand. Play the tiger and we'll pass. I wonder if you're boarding in the multiple empty plan, if you should board out the tendrils and then keep an extra artifact. Just a thought. Turn one thought cast. They're up to six cards. We draw a bobble. I think we'll just pass for now. There's a saga. Yep. That's a side master thopterist. So it looks like the empty plan is off at the moment. Another bobble. Yep. They have three in hand, but they're drawing up to six. Okay. Veil of Summer. Dark Ritual. We'll fetch. Grab a Badlands. Burning Wish. That happens. Grab Pulverize. Play the Bobble. I think we want to sit on the Pulverize. Like, casting it now doesn't make sense, I don't think. Relay for four. We reveal Rite of Flame, Dark Ritual, Abrupt Decay, and Rite of Flame. So we did not hit an action spell there. We'll bobble them. Shadow Spear. Okay. Urza Saga goes up to two. And they have six cards in hand. We'll draw off Bobble. Push Claw was a good one. Another Decay is a little bit awkward, though. All right, so let's start on the Rite of Flames. Dark Ritual. Hmm. I think we'll float a green. And let's attempt to pulverize. They tap for two blue. And pulverize. Wishclaw Talisman. Okay. Double Decay really awkward this turn. Veil of Summer. They hard cast a force. So I could... Wishclaw... And go get Lotus Petal, which would be Storm 8. Tendrils would be 9. I lose to any force after that. Alternatively, I could just empty for 16, and that should be to Shadow Spear. Okay, empty the Warrens. Like, I know you're probably thinking, like, why not go for the win there? I think going for the win there is just so risky. Like, look at that. Force Negation. Plus, if we draw any land, we have Abrupt Decay back up for the Shadow Spear. They're going to make a Construct. Going to 16 live. Guess they get Mox Opal here. They grabbed a Bobble. 
Interesting. Oh, I guess they had the pedal all along. Land off the top rope, please. And their last card in hand is Shadow Spear. It's a good one. Wow. Lotus Petal, land, Chrome Mox. Come on, duck. Nope. I think now we lose. Ah, oh, come on. We have to pass. We'll take the nine. I'm at seven. They're tapping the opal. They play another opal. Yeah, there's no winning this. Chalice on two. That doesn't really matter. There's our land, but we needed it last turn. So let's talk through our options. This puts me to six. If I swing out, they don't even have to block. And then they swing back and kill me. Uh, so if I leave one back, they swing with these. I have to block this. And so I'm forced to leave two back. So it becomes, do you blow up the Shadow Spear itself or do you blow up the Construct? Because I can chump block the Construct into Oblivion. Uh, but Shadow Spear is the card that will gain them a lot of life over and over. So swing out. Okay. So we're swinging for 12. It's free for them to block one with the Psy. They take 11. My best draw is Dark Ritual. That could theoretically win us the game. So they're attacking for four, which would put me to two in the air. So I can blow up the Shadow Spear. And chump block, and then I swing back for 12, which is actually lethal. Alright, we'll blow up the Shadow Spear. And I'll block. So right now we have 12 creatures attacking, and they have two blockers and 10 life. So right now we have lethal. Dark Ritual's probably our best draw on the deck. And then we have one Abrupt Decay left. They have one card in hand and an active wish claw. They're going to use the wish claw going to eight life. So now if I draw any zero, I have the win as well. Thought monitor. That's a good one. Gives them a real chance. They have four blockers. Yeah, now they have enough blockers to live. So I need to draw a mana source here. They just drew mono artifacts off that thought monitor. That's a bummer. Uh, we a land would do it because we have one fetchable left. Lotus petal, Chrome Mox does it. Lion's Eye Diamond draw. Another Wish Claw doesn't do it. I believe we've lost. There's also a Chalice for two in play. So we swing twelve. They block everything. They go to six. This Mox Opal isn't active. Even if I go get Dark Ritual, I'm a mana short of tendrils. I guess I have to make them make the right move. Swing out. Okay. Let's activate Wishclaw Talisman. I don't know. There's nothing that we can get here. Um, we are, in fact, dead. Okay. That's a real bummer. We're one in three. Maybe this list isn't the real deal. Who knows? Um, it's an interesting idea, but so far, the multiple echoes hasn't been worthwhile. The multi empty plan didn't come through for us. I mean, the main deck Ave has been decent, but I'm not sure yet. Let's play match number five. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Cobal and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. The fifth and final round of this miserable league. Let's try to get a W here. Mulligan. So this is a turn one echo if we want it. I think we keep this. We'll bottom the veil. And the reason I'm bottoming the veil is I've played this person before, according to my spreadsheet, uh, two months ago. And two months ago, they were on Maverick. So I'm going to make the assumption that they're still playing the same deck. And we can even find out by bobbling them. Well, this is not Maverick. <laughs> um, now I feel a little bit foolish. Let's uh, shuffle that Veil of Summer we put on the bottom back in. We'll grab a Bayou. We'll draw off the Bobble. And it's another Bobble. Tundra into Ponder. They did not shuffle. We'll take a draw, Galvanic Relay. So we're a mana short of Dark Ritual, Wish Claw, Bobble, Relay, so I'm going to pass. Ottawara. What does that mean? Another Ponder. They do not shuffle. Chrome Mox. That's not really... I, I suppose I could play out the Bobble, but I don't want to. Narset. 
Oh, Teff, sure. They have four cards in hand. We'll take a draw. Veil of Summer. Dark Ritual. It doesn't even make sense to put, pull out the Wish Claw when they have a Teferi. So I think maybe... Hmm. No, I'm going to imprint the Echo. I'm going to play the Claw. They force it. And Galvanic Relay for six. We'll bobble them. They're drawing swords to plowshares. Snapcaster Mage Ponder. They bounce their own Snapcaster with the Teferi. So we'll draw a card off the bobble. And then draw for turn. Look at this. It's great. Play the Verdant. We'll fetch down to 18. Grab a Badlands. We'll cast the Veil of Summer that's in exile. That one resolves. We'll play Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Play the Bobble. Right of Flame. Dark Ritual. This is 5 mana. 6, 7, 10. That is enough to cast Peer into the Abyss. So we'll do that. Well, priority sacrifice but i guess in theory with it being an exile i don't need to do that i could have just sacrificed it and not hold held priority this bis okay and they've conceded we've won a game how about that I'm going to try the multi-empty plan here goodbye echo hit submit Game two, we're on the draw. I will choose to keep. We have a bunch of storm spells in our deck, and well, this is the kind of hand that rewards those. Underground Sea. I'm not sure what they're up to yet, actually. Let's play out some bobbles. I feel like I should maybe try to figure out what's going on here. In their upkeep, we'll bobble them. Ponder. Looted Delta. Why are you playing black? Is it just like Lingering Souls? Like, they're probably like a Staff of the Storyteller deck with Lingering Souls, if I had to guess. Alright, we're going to draw three cards this turn between the two bobbles and the draw step. Okay. I'm going to pass and try to wait till next turn, when I can also cast Burning Wish in the same turn for extra storm purposes. They have selected a Tundra. Two mana. Meddling Mage. Okay. Probably names Burning Wish. Galvanic Relay. Yeah, I mean, Red Necker was a really powerful card. I do not blame you, Clobster. And we got the Chicken Tendies? Grab the Bayou. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Burning Wish. That resolves. Interesting. We'll grab Thoughtseize. Cast it. They've got not a lot going on here. I guess we'll take the... Brainstorm, Biotochrome Mox, and then empty the Warrens for 14 Goblins. Feels like 2018 all over again. The only way it could feel more like 2018 is if they hit me with a Plague Engineer here. Okay. The Fairy. They bounce a Goblin. We'll swing all out at Clobster. So they'll take 12. I could Tendrils them to 2, but I don't know why that would be effective so instead i'm just going to sit on these uh-oh hey it is 2018 all over again how about that so we know that they have energy flux in hand which means i'm going to lose metalcraft next turn we need to find a spell here geez louise okay i pass they plus the teferi and narset surgical extraction please cast that and they do, they just gave me the possible, and actually this is just the win. Yeah. They have one card in hand. They have said in chat, oh no. <laughs> oh no indeed. Okay. This was some good 2018 magic, but uh, I have to admit, I don't miss that happening to me at, at all. So um, in general, I'd say that this list was not a success, but uh feel free to try it maybe there's something here i don't know um so we went two three not the world's best record i didn't feel like i mean we also faced five blue decks where the multiple echoes was terrible so that wasn't great i hated the main deck tendrils i mean it was fine there but it was also just like a dead card a lot of the time 
So I didn't like the multiple echoes. I didn't like the tendrils. Main deck Ave was fine, but I didn't feel like the multiple empty plan worked. The multi like I don't know. Th like this list just didn't feel good to me. Uh, I don't really have a intelligent way of describing it, but it felt like the rewards for not playing ad nauseum just weren't there. Granted, we didn't really have a, a wide matchup spread. We had eight cast Delver, Omnitel, and uh, Asper control. But I don't know. Thank you for watching. Not all leagues will be a success. Sometimes you try and you fail. This was one of those. But uh, I appreciate you sticking it out this far and have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.